Following on from my last video uh, where I did the marking out test jig, uh, I've just turned up this little centre because the problem is that I've drilled for this in the CNC and probably shouldn't have really, I should have spotted for this. So consequently, I've turned up this little accurate centre with a spot in the middle uh, and that just sits and pushes tight in that centre to give me a centre spot. Uh, and then I've just gone out and marked the frame. Now, I've not videoed this because it's taken far too long. Um, but ultimately, I've used one of these little optical centre punches. Uh, I had blued it all up first, but these optical centre punches, or this one specifically anyway, is too dark with the blue. Uh, you can't, There's just physically, even if you go outside, there's not enough light to see through it. Uh, so I have marked out directly onto the plate there. Use the Just like I did in the last, I've used the uh, depth in tool to mark out for the half hour wheel then i went from the half hour wheel to the minute wheel and i've intentionally hit it so that i do hit this little uh, spot so these holes here are the theoretical holes uh, and unfortunately because i've made my wheel by hand um i must have been a fraction out unfortunately on um, one of the wheels so consequently this is just a tiny it's only a fraction of a millimeter but i'm gonna get, i'm gonna go for it i'm not gonna take the spot i think it'd work on the actual theoretical spot but i'm gonna take it to the proper depth uh, I've marked out that on purpose so that then I hit the um, hit the centre point, and then from there, and I'm I'm a little bit further out, quite a bit further out, a uh, good three two three mil uh, with this bottom spot here. So I've marked it all out now, and it's just a case now of uh, going over to the mill. Incredibly nervous about this, but time to cut uh, cut some holes. So this is a setup I've got and I'm not going to keep the camera on for long just because I'm trying to concentrate but essentially I've got the plates screwed down to um, a piece of wood, um, nice flat piece of oak and then clamped all that down as well um, and then I'm not really using the axes I'm actually just uh, spotting the, uh, the markings out and then drilling through. Okay, so this is so this is how I've clamped the uh, setup up uh, for the front plate. Nice and simple, really. Uh, I'm sure there's a more accurate way, possibly. But there's a strip just bolted onto the front, and then uh, luckily I was thinking about how I could clamp this down, then realised I could actually just clamp directly onto here. Uh, so it's holding it nice and tight as well. Whoops, uh, and then just centre and find the centres of the pre-drilled -hole, pre holes. So this has obviously been uh, taken from the depth in and then uh, drill straight through. So we'll release, we'll release this now um, and then we'll tidy the radius up, make the pillars uh, and hopefully this should be ready then to accept the, uh, accept the bearings. So there's the uh, standoff part. Just turn the ends down using the uh, old filer, i.e. belt sander. So I just need to make the standoffs now. Okay, so there's the front piece and the standoffs made now. They're just tapped M4 on either side. Won't need screwing in. And then that nicely aligns with the front section. So that gets screwed in from the back. Oop, remove that. So that's going to get screwed in from the back there. And then hopefully we can try and fix this up again and give it a test out. Okay, so we're here for our first assembly. Um, all the wheels and pinions are nicely attached now onto the arbors using shellac. Um, 
I did make one tiny mistake um, just a couple of days ago. Uh, I cut all the way through for the uh, right through the front frame into the back frame uh, intentionally at the time for the minute wheel uh, and then stupidly realized that the minute wheel actually runs from the front plate to the to just to the standoff pillar um so i didn't need that hole so if anybody has got a tip how what i can do with that hole to get rid of it um or just leave it there maybe i can use it as another mounting point in the back place then it doesn't look uh, misplaced but anyway least of my worries compared to what could have gone wrong so uh, let's start assembling this so we've got the um escape wheel arbor it's going to go there. We've then got the half hour wheel. And then we have got the great wheel. And there we go. I'm not going to spin it until I get the top plate on and get them all aligned. Um, but that's the that's the layout. Um, a couple of really important things to note. Um, I was just following along on the plans, uh, and I should have noticed this, but for some reason, these are spotted in the right place. So I'm, I'm going to speak to Steve about what I've done potentially here wrong. Um, these were spotted in the correct place, so the the pillars, um, and yet. The five and a half inch wheel is just about colliding with them. Now, I have hand depth this rather than done it all by um, CNC, if you like. And consequently, my depthing could have obviously been different based on how I've cut the wheels. Uh, but I didn't think they'd be that far off. Uh, and they are a long way off where the plans were. It doesn't matter. I get way enough space. Uh, when this is all straightened up, I think it's leaning towards us a little bit. So when this is all uh, pushed uh, straightened up, uh, I'm getting a good three three mil of space on either side, which I probably don't need. I could have made these a little bit bigger, but I have had to turn down the standoffs. And the second thing is important that we'll come on to in a minute and I'll show you is the um, escape wheel. Uh, again, these two pillars are in the same place uh, or where they should be. Uh, and yet, actually, in in future, definitely would have, uh, if I could do this again, just literally drop it down by five, ten millimetres for that, that top pillar. Again, I should have really seen that come in uh, before I did it. But again, no problem. Made a little step on that pillar and it, it works fine. So I'm going to try and attempt to put on this uh, top plate um, and then I'll come back to the video. <laughs> Okay, so we've just lifted this up now. Um, that seems to be turning nicely and freely. That's better, there we go. Okay, so this is a simple jig that I've made. Um, I know that the distance between the suspension spring pivot um, and the centre of the escape wheel is 61 millimetres in my case. Um, slightly higher because I'm using a slightly large diameter escape wheel. Mine's 31.6, Bernie recommended 30 millimetres. Okay, so maybe there's a better way of doing this, but you can see now that I've got the marks appearing which is my location of the pallets okay so we're gonna shape these up now to be the uh, pallet holders so that's just the great wheel and the half hour wheel. Spins for ages. In fact, the half hour wheel isn't balanced, um, which if we want perfection, we should do uh, maybe in a later video. And when that stops, it actually ends up rotating backwards as well. So it's nice and free. 
So we'll put the, uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> so then we'll put the um, escape wheel in now. So quite exciting. No, no pendulum on yet, but if I give this a tap and then just pull lightly down on the string. <laughs> we got some escaping work in there. Okay, let's uh, keep going. Well, a little bit, literally five, ten minutes of adjustments just to get it ticking. Oh, it stopped. Feels like the uh, tower clock build. Oh, we're off again. Okay, so whilst I'm a long way off, we've got something that vaguely resembles a clock. Happy days. Well, there's a few first few ticks. Well, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's looking, uh, it's looking good. Okay, so now that's out of the way, a bit more relaxed, and I can continue the build. Thanks again for watching. I have got an issue I've noticed. My pallets are only spreading 11 and a half teeth, not 12 and a half. Back to the drawing board with the pallets.